The music you just heard was completely composed by a grade 5 music student. The example above shows advanced features of changing time signatures, extra notation, dotted rhythms, and it's even written to show people places or ideas. This presentation is about storytelling through music, and the journey that myself and my students went on will show you how we are inspired to compose and create with books, poems, and fairy tales. My name is Samuel Wright. I work at Tejon Christian International School. Everything I do comes from an ORF approach. I integrate technology with recorder, with singing, with dancing, and with movement. My classroom and my students is very traditional. We have notation, we do harmony, we use laptops, we handwrite melodies, but everything is based upon us physically doing and being a part of the music. I want my students to internalize rhythm, pitch, texture, beat, pulse, and I use any tool I can find to put through the idea that music can be spontaneous and have a pattern or structure. I use iPad apps that show melodic shape and contour, as well as structure or form and repetition. I then use a series of activities where my students have to draw melodies, engage with famous pieces such as Carnival of the Animals or Peter and the Wolf, but they have to create their own music from it. Improvisation is a huge part of my lessons, as well as the students making e-portfolios. I use Book Creator and iBooks Author, as well as a few other methods to photograph and video my students in the lesson. This video will demonstrate to you the journey my students went on as they read stories, legends and poems, interpreted them in musical form, and then went and created amazing compositions from these pieces of literature. I then took all of their work and put it into an iTunes U course that you can enroll in. This course goes through our entire lesson plan, it goes through the creative experiences we undertook, and it also shows examples in iBooks where I've had previous students compose themes and melodies for paintings, for drawings, and for, in the case of my four-year-old, his own story. So let's dive in and I'll show you how my students composed and created with the text and materials that we chose. What I have found a very powerful way to engage students is to give them a model, show them examples of high levels of creativity, examples where they can engage, dance, sing and move with music from other cultures, tie it to stories, tie it to a legend, inspire them and then turn around and give them the tools, the language, the techniques that they can use to turn this into their own creation. And that is what I've done with the fairy tale compositions. Take this story for example. Let's say there is a lady. She loves playing the violin. She's a princess as all fairy tales show. But then one day this princess is turned into a dragon. Why? We don't know but that's part of the story. And then as everyone can guess a knight comes along to fight the dragon because that's what knights do. But what if that knight found out it was really the princess and instead he proposed to the dragon. The dragon, liking this proposal, accepts and instantly is turned back into a princess. Throughout all of this the students have five different stages of transformation. These five stages can then be used to create a melody, a rhythm, a different texture, or a different type of music to represent change. What I do as the teacher is I collect a series of songs, dances, or rhythms, and with each level of change, I introduce this new element. The students quickly make the connection that they too can use these types of rhythms, melodies, or textures to compose their own creations. And that's what we did. Beyond the core arts and more, with a focus on transliteracy, or as I'd like to call it, transfer skills, 
is very important when creating your music. What my students here have shown, and when you log into the iTunes U course, is that they were able to successfully take the language, the text, and the natural rhythm or pitch that they heard in those texts and translate it into composition. Let me play you a few examples of their feedback to each other, which was part of the final reflection task. They all sat in a panel like a television show and gave each other feedback. One great thing and one area for improvement. It is also based on literate writing hood. And then the part I liked about Erin's is that she had patterns that continues and I think she should improve on putting more variety of notes. What I loved about this student's reflection was how they looked at the two aspects of the notes and the patterns, which was a huge part of the music we engaged with. I found the fairy tale of Little Red Riding Hood. And the thing that I liked about his music is the hunter. It had the tempo and the speed. It was fast since the story got more nervous. And also things that he should improve is that in his when he wrote his music, the mostly every music had intervals of thirds. And I think he should make more different patterns in notes on his music. This student's reflection was very powerful. It showed her subjective response, how she felt and how effectively the student composed for the characters or the themes in the story. But it also showed her developing musical knowledge. She used terms like composing with thirds. This is advanced knowledge for a grade five student, but by looking at different compositions or different melodies and rhythms from around the world, the vocabulary and the skills of these students was enhanced. So when they went to create, they had a large palette of language, terminology, and skills for creating. So let's get stuck into it. What's the first thing we did? As a class, listening to different models, we found out very quickly we needed good melody writing skills. When we read the book, The Empty Pot by Demi, we found there were key protagonists, such as Ping, the little boy, and if we wrote a melody that was just his, whenever his name came up, we could associate that melody with the character. We looked at Pacini's use of an ancient Chinese tune, Molihua, and its pentatonic pattern, and then what we did is we sang it. We used solfege, we cut it up, we sang it backwards, we played it, we danced to it. We even wrote our own class theme for Ping, and here it is. Each student then took the same process that Pacini did for his opera Turandot, reverse engineered the melody Molucqua as well as using samples of Chinese scales, and they were able to compose each five separate melodies for Ping, for the flowers, for the empty pot, for the father, the emperor, and children. When we did our dancing activities, and when we did our drawing of melodic contours in the air, the students found out some patterns could be repeated, some patterns could go up, and some could go down. And then by using the model of Pacini using that Chinese melody, the students found out that composers approach things very differently. It's not like they sit down and magic music filters down through their brain and they can write it. But they started from a model. They researched, they created, they improvised, and they came up with amazing creative melodies. Now I'm going to play the Zhao melody over the top of Broken Ball Doom by Louis. So I do this.
The second part of our journey was where we looked at rhythm. I broke it down by using a poem. We did table drumming, we did dividing of the beats, we did notation, but the actual exciting part was where we got to read a poem and the students were able to take the words from the poem and create rhythm patterns out of those words. We looked at a book, The Earth Under Sky Bears Feet. We read through a few of the poems and the students decided to use the one called Sky Bear. It had the most characters, it had protagonists, it had a lovely ending and the illustration was beautiful. The students commented that it helped them create music. As soon as I got the students to create their patterns from the words of the poem, we looked at time signatures, we looked at changing the meter, we looked at changing the emphasis of words, and the students then created their own soundscapes uh, visually as well as verbally, which we were then able to transfer to iPads, and the students could create different textures of rhythm in the smart strings, in the piano, or then in body percussion and with the ORF instruments. One game we particularly enjoyed playing was called Complementary Rhythms. Yeah, that's loud. This brought upon a very exciting time because the students could then bring out their iPads. They had the skills, they had the language, they had everything they needed. And now I gave them an iPad with GarageBand and I showed them in a class setting how they could play orchestral strings. They could change the piano, the mode, the scale. They could actually then play a bass guitar. They could use um, a guitar pattern and sing their melody over the top. They could body percuss all of the, the rhythms they had just done in the game using the sampler and garage band and then add in their melody again on top. What this meant was instead of the students spending so much time trying to figure out sounds and trying to find a melody, they had their melodies, they had their ideas and now they could interpret them for the narratives, for the poems. And it became very exciting. As you can see, the students would have their iPads and they'd have their music next to it and they'd be making up string accompaniment parts for their melody or weird synthesizer type melodies for something scary. So to start this process off, what we did is we all sat down with our iPads. We opened GarageBand and I picked some kids' names out of the class. I had Tyler the Terrible, and Aaron the Great, and we made up our own fairy tale like the dragon tale before. And what the students had to do was draw the contour of the melody they thought a scary or heroic kingly person would sound like. And then as a class, we figured out, how do you notate with GarageBand? What directions do you put on your score when you're writing for GarageBand? And this is what we came up with. By providing the students with a way of notating what they came up with, but also putting the performance directions for GarageBand on their score, the students could now orchestrate their melodies, their rhythms, their patterns 
for their chosen fairy tale with great ease and with so much more creativity and freedom. So students chose their tortoise and their hare, Red Riding Hood. They had pizzicato strings, body percussion, and they even had high first violins or electric and distorted guitars. Now, as you go through the iTunes U course, at each stage of pitch, rhythm, and textures, you will find student work samples. Analyze these yourself. Go through them with your kids, because these are the final compositions my students came up with. I've been using Sibelius to turn the student scores into video, but you could do the same, and the video is in iTunes U showing how to do that. The final thing I want to share with you are my students' reflections. I needed to evaluate how much my students had grown in their musical knowledge along this creation journey. How much of the language had they understood about protagonists and characters and poems? How much had they applied this to their own learning? So what we did is we got into a series of television panels where the students uh, critiqued each other's compositions and they had to give, as I said before, one great thing and one thing to improve on. Let me show you three examples from our live panel of reviewers. And this story is about the Red Riding Hood. And I like the part that he put um, sharps in the wolf part, so it could be more scarier. And I think she was successful on writing the whole music by its characteristics. And I think she can improve on writing more music about the scenery. It was based on the fairy tale Three Little Pigs. And the music, um, he um, showed me was about the first pig. And the thing I liked about his was that it was the notes where um, it fit together very well so that um, it would sound like the lazy um, personality of the first pig. By Eva and it's the Little Red Riding Hood. And the good part of what she did is she put pizzicatos in every music and she made it colorful. The one thing I want to recommend her is to kind of make her wolf a little bit longer because it was extremely short. All of my students enjoyed this creative journey. They enjoyed the literature that I chose as well. The Empty Pot for Chinese music, Sky Bear Poem for North American Indigenous music. We also used ukuleles and played pieces from Hawaii so that my students could look at harmony and how triads work. And all of this transferred beautifully to when we brought in the iPads and technology. The students understood what the buttons, the keys, the chords meant, and they were better equipped. They had the language and skills needed to compose and create for the poem and the narratives. We then presented it all at the PYP Grade 5 exhibition.